All right, welcome back to module number four, target marketing approaches and conveying homeowner benefits. This is probably one of the major factors that most of you guys wanted to see. So let's talk a little bit about uh, target marketing. We mentioned earlier that the typical age of a first time home buyer is 32. So you're gonna to wanna to target younger couples or singles who are currently renting. Think about the advertising on rental websites in local rental classifieds, passing out flyers in apartment complexes, which I don't think is necessarily a good idea. Most property managers are actually going to ask you to leave. Uh, but I want to go back to uh, rental websites and local rental classifieds. Uh, especially there's magazines out there that, that gear towards that. You might be able to put in that, an ad in there. Now, what an agent or what a first time home buyer is actually going to be looking for is a knowledgeable, thorough guide through the entire process. That is going to be your benefit or your go-to kind of strategy you want to make sure that you can communicate through the entire process with these clients because once again we've mentioned they don't even know what they don't know so you are going to have to be their guide they need a lot more information and typically they need it at a slower pace that way they can think about it and get feedback to help them decide. They're gonna ask a lot of questions. Now, I know as an instructor, there are people that come to me and they say, it's always like to start off with, hey, I got a stupid question. And I always reply to them like my father told me, hey, there are no stupid questions, just stupid people that ask them. <laughs> no, that's not what I say. And you shouldn't say that either, okay? Don't do that. Um, but it's funny how on this side of the table, I hear the same question a thousand times over the last 20 years of education. And you guys better be prepared for that as well. Try and always remember your mindset. This is the first time they've asked the question. I know it may be the 20th time that you've answered it. And you don't want to start a question with like, Okay, here. No, remember, they're brand new. You need to help them and give them that information. Now, one of the things I suggest, and this is purely a suggestion, is that you create a target customer profile. Now, I've given you most of the information you need. 32 years of age, $75,000, you know, $190,000 house. They most have student debt. So that profile is going to help you then create your marketing campaign. Certainly with somebody that's making $75,000, you are probably not going to put an ad in like Golf Digest. People that play get Golf Digest are golfers who are typically have an income over $120,000 unless they're just weekend hackers and you're not going to, they're only going to see your ad maybe once and probably don't read Golf Digest. But I think you get the gist of what I'm talking about. When you create that profile or use the one that I've given you, it will then allow you to identify some of your target market and how you're going to market to that target market. All right. Now, here's some things that you want to keep in mind when dealing with first time home buyers. You want to educate them. Before working with a first time home buyer, you gotta ask yourself a question. Why do they wanna work with a realtor? They can do all the research online, right? So you've got to educate them to your advantage, meaning what can you do outside of a computer stat? You know, do they understand home inspections? Do they understand the financing? Do they understand how appraisals work or the closing process or what title work is? These are all the value adds that you kind of need to give, all right? Now, one other thing to remember, first time home buyers, 
typically have a lot of friends that are first time home buyers. So that is going to be a group that once you do one first time home buyer, you're going to try and get referrals from that client because they're going to be friends with other first time home buyers. Okay. The next thing you need to worry about or think about is ramping up your sh social media. Remember we discussed before the average age of the generation Y that 22 to 39 range, they are going to be on social media. They are mainly that what we call finger quotes again, the millennials, and they are very prevalent on social media. Now, here's a hint for you, some of your older people out there. It's not Facebook. Sorry to say, dude, <clears throat> my kids tell me that Oh, I, I'm like, hey, I sent you a Facebook message. And they're like, dad, we don't do Facebook. All right. So while I say social media, you might want to start thinking about new things like TikTok, uh, Snapchat, uh, some of those kind of social medias, not just necessarily, oh, well, I'm on Facebook. Well, that age group really is not on Facebook. Another thing you can think about doing is hosting a first time home buyer seminar. So half the time, most first time home buyers don't even know where to start. They don't know where to get, do I call a, a home inspector? Do I call a, a, a do I call my bank? Uh, who do I get? And on top of this, let me throw another piece of information. Most of them actually ask other friends who they used. So once again, that goes back to friends are friends of friends. So a lot of first time home buyers don't know where to start. So the first place they start typically, Hey buddy, you just bought a home. Who'd you use? So you're going to want to tie that back into that first statement that we just talked about a minute ago. Um, let's go back and look at it. <clears throat> referrals, you know, referrals because that pro tip right there, uh, first time home buyers are friends with other first time home buyers. Well, that ties into this because they don't know where to get started. So the best thing that you can do to help them is have a first time home buyer seminar. Now, obviously there's a lot of marketing to that and you have to go back to your social media page that we just talked about, but literally first time home buyer seminars are a great thing because you want to push the whole concept of how I can help you be a first time home buyer. You know, want to learn the process? Come to my first home buyer seminar. Do you want to learn how to get started in buying a home? Come to my first time home buyer seminar. These, that is going to be a big issue and reach out to some of your past first time home buyer clients and with the announcement, Hey, I'm going to have a first time home buyer. I know that you were already bought a home, but you might want to tell your friends. You need a good, good website, dude. That's right. Once again, they're on social media. They love looking at websites. They love doing research. They start most of their stuff researching. Um, most millennials, once again, finger quotes, like to read things like Yelp and, and get uh, reviews. So make sure if you have a website, you actually put your reviews on the first page and don't be afraid to ask for a review, you know, tell somebody, Hey, I really liked your, uh, you really helped me. Thank you very much. Hey, that's great. Could you help me with a Google review? Because it would help other first time home buyers find me as well as me find them. So don't feel wrong about asking for, ref uh, reviews. Uh, the school here, we ask for reviews all the time, you know, on our Google page so that other students like you might read the reviews. You might want to have those directly on your website. Okay. Um, now content, I threw this one in because this is my personal soapbox I'm going to get on. And if you're new to social media or you think you know what you're doing, Trust me, there is a uh, thing called content advertising. Content advertising 
is something that you guys should be thinking about when you're marketing. It is more than simply an ad on Facebook or a post. Let me go back that way. Let's say that. Sorry, change your notes there. It's actually more than a post. There are people all the time that I talk to. I said, are you on social media? And they're like, well, yeah, here, here's a, let me show you my post. And it says like, looking to buy or sell a home, call me. Oh, wow. That you went all out on that one, didn't you, dude? How long did you stay up thinking of that line? No, you want to think of content. You want to make that person reading that post know that you know what you're doing. So something along the lines of, hey, look at all the benefits for first time home buyers. If you want to know more, give me a call. That is something more because you're going to offer them content. You're going to offer them a reason to call you, not just, hey, I'm a first time. If you're a first time home buyer, call me. No, dude, give them some content because they want to get to know that you know what you're doing. So, you know, post things like, hey, here's a link to my first time home buyer guide. Make them give you your email address. And we I actually do a whole class on content marketing. <clears throat> Make them give you your email for this content. And then eventually what they're going to do is say, hey, who's that person that we've been reading all their uh, content about? Yeah, let's call them to buy uh, be our agent. Now, here's the other thing. Got to be mobile friendly mobile friendly. This goes along with the website. Your website must be mobile friendly. That generation, Gen Y, Gen X, the millennials, whatever you want to call them, they are literally attached to their phone. All right. There was an actual report that said most millennials actually love searching on their phone more than a uh, computer. Now think about that because that allows them to multitask while they're sitting in the passenger side of a car. They're on their phone looking at social media or uh, agent reviews while they're watching TV. They do phones and TV while they're talking to their friends. They actually are on the mobile. So more than just a website, you are actually going to have to become mobile friendly. All right. Now, the other thing is you need to make sure that you can actually convey this information so that they understand that you know what you're doing. you got to talk a little bit about the pitfalls that they may not be aware of. You've got to not only give them the rosy side, you've got to be able to give them the thorny side of that. Hey, here's some things that may happen. Let's keep an eye out for that. So they're going to be looking for that perfect home and they're going to try and be thorough. So they're going to be frustrated. They're going to want to look at a large number of homes and make sure that you don't, with all of that I've said, make sure that you don't overwhelm them out of the gate. All right. So don't look at more than three or four properties in a day. Don't talk about the closing procedure on the very first day that you're talking about, well, you got to wire money and you got to worry about wire scams and all on the very first meeting. You do not want to overwhelm them. You want to come across as the expert and the person who knows, and you want them to reach out to you either through your website, through some mobile marketing, through a referral of other first time home buyers, any of those avenues are going to be great to help you maintain this niche client of first time home buyers. And the last is well, I've touched on it. Don't get frustrated yourself. Uh, I personally have dealt with a lot of home first time home buyers. And I know that frustration sets in because once again, like I said, it feels like, <laughs> Oh, this is the hundredth time I've gone through this conversation. Yes, it is, but it's their first time. So remember it's, they don't even know what they don't know and they have no idea of the process. All right, hold on.